So I volunteer at Metro Animal Care and Control and I started there because obviously I love animals but also because I feel like I'm helping something greater in myself given that Mac is a no-kill shelter and we even adopted two of my own cats from there and I walked in and I met this lovely woman and she was sitting there and running a little adoption interview with us and I was like wow I want to do this you know I want to talk to people and help them find the cats and dogs that work best for them so I came back a little bit later and now I do that for other people which is really cool. I think it's the um, the drive and desire to get other to get other get other people involved I mean I think sort of going along with that the um, I guess I call it nurturing in, in, in the environment because not only do uh, does she bring people to the shelter? Then we have a train we have a training process to go through too. So to make all the volunteers comfortable, so they're safe and comfortable. The dogs and cats are safe and comfortable, and she takes an active role in that too. She doesn't just bring the bring these new people to the shelter and be like, okay, off you off you go. She takes an active role in leading them through um, through that um, train through that training path and making them feel comfortable too. I just think it's important. I know Chris says this a lot and he's said this since I've started volunteering here, but we're so much more than what a lot of people take us for. We're not just a place where you can uh, drop off your animals, but we're also a place where you can take an animal home, you know? One of the reasons why I decided to serve specifically in the Nashville Public Schools uh, is a lot of my passion and work kind of centers around health equity and health literacy. And Metropolitan Nashville Public Schools traditionally don't have mandatory health curriculum in their classrooms. And consequently, it's really important for these children in these schools to be able to get access to adequate health education. I've had the privilege of working with Rankin for a little over two years now, and he's one of the most remarkable people I've had a chance to work with. Um, he brings such a passion for young people, for health literacy, and for working in his community to everything that he does. My parents are both immigrants, and uh, I, I remember the lengths my parents would go to to kind of ensure that my little sister and I were able to get adequate health care. My sister was born with spina bifida, so we were in and out of the hospital for a long part of that time. That kind of early experience kind of facilitated my understanding of what's generally known as like the social determinants of health. This like idea that where you live and the education level that you have and your individualized experiences that can really factor into a person's health. He is someone who is truly going to have an impact on the world throughout his life. Um, he is someone who gives me hope. He's going to be someone who has a profound impact on the people around him and on the communities around him. I serve at National Tree Foundation, National Shakespeare Festival, Room at the Inn, uh, Sheriff Israel, and even the Frist. I heard about the Mary Strobel Award from a, more than one of the organizations that she had been volunteering for and, uh, and was so very proud when um, she was selected as one of the finalists. Um, you know, I think most parents are proud of their children, um, but it's, it's such a lovely thing to see other people, you know, kind of validate that. Every one of the places that I volunteer at now uh, were somehow part of my life when I was younger. So I was able to benefit from the community then, and now I can get back to it so that others can. I think that Sadie sees all these activities as sort of a part of just her natural life. And when she was only a few years younger, uh, right near her school's sports fields, there's an assisted living facility, and she'd look over it and say, Dad, that place just looks so barren. And she went out to talk to the National Tree Foundation and they let her put together her own project. And she planted a whole fruit grove there with her friends and, and, and others. And, and it's a beautiful place to look at now. And I think that all these things are seen by people in Nashville and they may not know, but hey, my kid had a lot to do with that. <laughs>